This week on The Gadget Show Web TV, Otis is throwing his data around the office using a new wireless sharing gadget, and John's got a first look at a wireless hi-fi system from Philips, plus the latest in gadget tech news. Hello and welcome back to The Gadget Show studio and Web TV. Later, Otis goes back out into the Gadget Show office to throw around some music and photos. But first, here's John with the Philips wireless multi-room hi-fi system. Philips have long been players in the wireless home music system market with their Streamium series. Normally, they're compact one-box units which are very easy to use. Cheaper than systems from the likes of Sonos, though they don't sound quite so good. Now, however, they're hoping to improve their sound with this new MCI 500H. It's got separate speakers. It actually looks rather like a micro hi-fi underneath these covers. There's a 5-inch driver unit and a silk domed tweeter. You can connect wirelessly or via cable direct through an ethernet socket at the back and you can do it both at the same time. I found both ways were very easy to set up. Once you're connected there are lots of things you can do with the Streamium. You can just put a CD into the tray and play it, in which case if it's a popular CD anyway you'll get uh, track information provided by Gracenote on the screen. The information actually comes from a database built into the unit that you can update every few months or so. It's not direct from the internet. You can also rip tracks directly from the CD onto the 160 gigabyte hard drive that's built into the unit. That gives you the capacity theoretically for up to 80,000 tracks, though obviously it depends on the bit rate you're using. It allows you to select that at rates up to 320 kilobits a second. You can connect the Streamium to play music files that are on any PCs in your house. And again, I found it very straightforward to set up. It recognised my home computer instantly, and there were all the music files ready to play. I did notice a slight degradation in sound quality, though, when I compared an original CD played in the unit with a 320 kilobit rip of it streamed to the unit wirelessly. It was slightly harsher, slightly lacking in detail, but still pretty good. I did find the remote control slightly unintuitive. You navigate round your music collection using the arrow keys. You don't press the central button to enter just to play. I guess we've all become so used to iPods. There is, however, this uh, intriguing follow me function. That's if you've got a house full of streamiums. You can just press that to get music in different rooms. There's also an FM radio built in and an internet radio. Once you've uh, registered your Streamium, you can access the truly astonishing number of internet radio stations divided in the usual way in this interface between uh, genres, languages and countries. Happily, once you've found a station you like, you can easily add it to your favourites by pressing the right arrow key on the remote. And if that isn't enough, there's a USB socket on top, so you can stick in a pen drive and playback tracks from that. There are a relatively limited range of formats are supported. You can do MP3s, you can play non-lossless WMA and AAC, although you can't play anything back with DRM protection on it. The sound quality is quite an interesting one actually, I and mean, it produces a very warm, pleasant sound, and it's certainly better than a small one-box streamium. And it's loud enough, they claim an output of 100 watts. So it's not an arrival hi-fi system, not even a micro hi-fi one. A rather boomy bass, the lack of treble detail are really quite obvious. And while I'm moaning, I'd also like some separate speaker cables and standard speaker connectors so I could use other speakers if I wanted to. Overall then, this Streamium offers great networking capabilities and it's really easy to use. But if you're after the ultimate in sound quality, I think you'll need to look somewhere else. knowledge that not everyone has time to watch those extra features on their Blu-ray movies, companies Blue Focus and NetBlender have developed a smart app that will allow users to transfer those extra features onto their phones so they can watch them when they're on the go. The BD Touch 2 application will be available for free for BlackBerry phones, Google's Android platform, the iPhone and iPod Touch and the Palm Pre. And the application will turn your phone into a remote control for your Blu-ray player. Sharp have teamed up with Japanese mobile phone company KDDI to release the world's first waterproof solar-powered mobile phone. 
The solar panel for the currently unnamed handset is embedded in the flip lid and when exposed to light for just 10 minutes will give the user up to one minute's worth of talk time or two hours standby time, but there are more specs to be revealed. The waterproof solar powered handset is available in June this year, but sadly only to the Japanese market and there's no news yet on when it will make it to the UK. Time for Otis, who's been very busy in the office this week, flicking his pictures and music around with this little gadget. This is the Leo personal sharing device. It's a 16 gig storage facility that allows you to exchange or share data in three different ways. You can put a USB stick in there and exchange, or you can use the shuttle and exchange up to two gig of information. The real genius is up to 10 meg at a time. You can share files simply by flicking your wrist. Now you need someone else who's got one of these. You simply sync them up, find whatever file it is you want to share, and then flick it over. Let me demonstrate for you. Hello, Amy. Hello, Amy. Would you like to hear my new album that I've been working on? Yeah? Cool. These little beauties here are storage devices, but you can share files just by flicking like that. Yeah, seriously. So look, let's sync up. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, music coming over. Ready? You got it? Yeah. Are you receiving? Vibration action? Yeah. Fantastic. And I've sent over a music file. Now it does this by sending information over an ultra wide band, which is better than Wi Fi and it utilizes low frequency, low energy transfer of information. The other genius thing about the Leo is the security facility. You can register your thumbprint on the Leo and nobody else can get access to your information. At £160 a unit, I can't see these flying off the shelves. However, the security aspect and the flick of the wrist to exchange files, if these could be incorporated into mobile phones, they'd be onto a winner. Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for this week, but we'll be back at the same time next week with more Web TV. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter for regular updates on the show.